Welcome to Crime Most French, a fortnightly podcast covering intriguing cases carried out on French soil. Researched and narrated by Cedric and rudely interrupted by me, Melanie. We're the true crime podcast on the lines. Crack open the van and let the mayhem commence. This is episode 87, the Narumi Kurosaki Affair. On the 5th of December 2016, in the evening, a group of friends are worried about not having heard from Narumi Kurosaki for a while. They knock on her door, but there's no response. By the 15th of December, the police get involved, but Narumi is nowhere to be found. On the 4th of December 2016, at 3.20am, students sleeping in the University of Besançon's halls are woken up by screams, followed by, followed by loud thumps. One of the students even texts her friends to say that she's scared and she's heard screams like someone was being murdered. Yeah, I guess a, a hall of residence is quite a kind of like boisterous place, but there's a, a, fi- a fine line between uh, having fun and being murdered, you know, the sound-wise. He, yes, there's a fine line between hearing noise from neighbours drinking too much and somebody getting murdered, yes. Yeah. Yes. I don't know how, how you make the difference, but... Mm. Anyway, uh, one student... Adrien Laurent comes out of his room to check in the corridor where the noise came from, but is unable to find which room the noise generated from. As things got quiet by that point, all the students go back to bed, and that's it. <laughs> I don't think I could go back to sleep that quickly, but you know. Yeah, after thinking that somebody's getting murdered, yeah, yeah but apparently students do that, I don't know. The next day, some of Narumi Kurosaki's friends are worried because they haven't seen her in class, which is very strange, because she's a good and serious student. She has never missed a class before. In the evening, Arthur Del Piccolo, one of her friends, and a group of some of her classmates go and check on her. They knock on her door, but she doesn't answer. They consider asking the janitor to open the room with his pass, Mm -hmm. but as they are about to do so, Arthur receives a text from Narumi telling him, to leave her alone. So it sounds like someone's in the room and just doesn't want to be disturbed. Yes. But you, you, would hear, you would hear somebody outside your, your yeah. dorm door, you know. Yeah, and it's clearly a response of, uh, to them knocking yes. at the door. So, mm. yeah, she, they assume it's her because mm-hmm. it comes from her phone and right. it says, go away, I don't want to talk to you. Yeah. So they're a bit surprised, but... There's nothing you can do about it, so they go away and leave her alone. Yeah, I mean, I guess, I'm presuming she's an overseas student. Uh, she's Japanese, yes. Yeah. Um, it's the International Language Department of the university. Right. So they're pretty much all foreign students. Yeah, I mean, it's quite stressful being away from home, you know, that young. I guess so, she's in her 20s, I can't remember exactly her age, 21, 22, maybe. Arthur tries to communicate with Narumi for the next few days, but all he gets from her is that she's met another man and she doesn't want to talk to him anymore. Oh He's dear. upset, but there's nothing he can do about it. So was he kind of like more of a boyfriend than just a friend? Yeah, it takes a while to, to the police to establish that, but it, it, it sounded like he was her current boyfriend, yes. Right. So he's going to obviously be in the picture if something bad has happened to her. And oh, yeah. I'm presuming as we are talking about her... Something yes. bad's happened to her. Over the next few days, family and friends of Narumi's receive texts and social media messages from her. She tells them that she's having problems with the passport and she needs to go to the consulate in Lyon urgently. Right. Her family finds the contents of the message strange, but they also find the way they're constructed very strange. It doesn't seem to be written by her first language Japanese speaker. Right. Japanese has special forms of speech for women, for example, and it doesn't seem to work out very well. So they find it strange that their daughter doesn't speak her own language, right? Mm. It's a hugely complicated language. Well, it has sort of, it's, it's not, uh, I have a friend of mine learned Japanese at university and she really liked it and she said it's not difficult, it just has weird subtleties that you don't really understand very well as a European. But otherwise... In was terms she European, was she? Well, she was technically Vietnamese, but she grew up for, in France from like age two right. or age three, so she was French, really. Okay. She didn't speak Vietnamese anyway. <laughs> she didn't speak Vietnamese, no. but she learned to speak. 
Japanese. Japanese. Yes. Weird. Uh, and she was saying that, yeah, it's technically fairly simple as a language, but mm. it has weird subtleties. It's the same in lots of languages. Gaelic, for example, has very strange prepositions for um, relative position of speakers. Mm. You have a different preposition if you're lower than the person you're talking to, for example. It's really strange. It's not something you would do in most languages, but some have very strange things like that. So, and yes, they have formal and informal speeches. French has it as well. Yes. Yeah, but she was saying that Japanese is not that difficult. It's probably difficult to get it right every mm. time. Yes. But it's a bit like Chinese. Chinese is also, is also very, very logical. So it's easy to learn in principle. It's just hard to do it right. Yeah. But it's not very difficult grammar. It's, it's a fairly simple language and it's very regular and strict. Yeah, just few exceptions. It's just the characters are just so dissimilar. Oh, yeah. To, to Writing it is difficult. Yes. So, yeah. yeah. She also sends texts to her friend saying that she has a new boyfriend and she's living with him. That happened fast then. But overall, the texts and messages she sends to family and friends are fairly consistent. It's tell the same story. Right. She met someone and she's going away and leave her alone. Essentially, that's what she's saying to everyone. But the family find it all a bit fishy because it doesn't sound like... But it doesn't look like it's written the right way, yes. After the 12th of December, it's radio silence. Nobody receives any message from Narumi. Nobody uses her accounts. She has completely disappeared. On the 14th of December, the International Relations Office for the University after having been contacted by the language center where Narumi was allegedly mm -hmm. working or going to school, alerts the police. The police gets into her room on that day. Right. And they immediately find her disappearance suspect and they open an inquiry. The police discover that on the 6th of December, Narumi's credit card is used to purchase a train ticket from besançon to Lyon, which mm -hmm. is consistent with her, what her she was story, saying. yeah. It made sense because that's where the consulate was. But what's strange, though, is that passengers on that train, when they're questioned, don't remember anybody looking like Naomi on the train. Right. Well, so it sounds like somebody's bought the ticket but not used it. Well, possibly, or maybe people weren't paying attention. It's not really proof of anything. It's no. just a bit strange that nobody saw a Japanese woman on, woman on that train, but yeah. maybe nobody noticed. What's more important is that the staff at the consulate says that there's been no visit from Narumi. Because so when you enter a consulate or an embassy, you have to sign at the front, yeah. show your ID and all mm -hmm. that, because yeah, I've yeah, done yeah. it many times, and there would be a trace of her, and there's no trace of her, so she's never been there. So that story just is a story, it's not, not in fact. All the way to the train, and maybe including the train trip, is possible. Yeah, but, but no, After not that, the, the consulate, consulate, no, no. no. Their first port of call, of course, is the boyfriend. Of course. Arthur. After she moved to France from Japan, Narumi got involved with a, an Italian guy, I think, called Arthur Del Piccolo. Mm, it sounds Italian. Yeah. That's the guy who received the text from her first mm -hmm. when they were at her door. They interrogate him, and he mentions to detectives that Narumi has an ex-boyfriend called Nicolas Zepeta Contreras from Chile who Naomi told him is very jealous and possessive. Right. He even went as far as breaking into Naomi's Facebook account a couple of times to see what was going on in her life from Chile. Okay, so he's a psycho stalker. He's a stalker, yes. However, as they start digging into Naomi's last few days, they discover by geolocation of her phone that she was in a restaurant on the evening on the 4th of December. And they also discovered that the bill was paid with the Chilean credit card. Oh, no. Which is weird. Oh, no. So suddenly the ex-boyfriend story is maybe not completely unlikely. Yeah. So they check CCTV at the, at the restaurant and around the restaurant. Mm -hmm. And they can confirm that Nairobi and Contreras had dinner at the restaurant about right. 20 kilometers from the Besançon on the 4th of December in the evening. Okay, so, so he was... He was just in France. He was in France, yes. Co coincidentally. Uh, we don't know why, but he was in France. So you just, you and know, met. you're in Chile, you know, you want to go for a wee trip. So you fly to the other hemisphere. Yeah, on the other side of the planet. That's pretty much as far as you can go. Yes. Okay. All alarm bells, all flags waving. Yes. Well, fla <laughs> alarm bells going off and flag, uh, red flags waving. Yes. Yeah. The... 
footage shows them leaving the restaurant at 9.57 p.m. Mm -hmm. And another footage shows them arriving at the university at 10.58, mm. which is a bit slow for 20 kilometers or so. That's an hour. So now Contreras becomes an interesting person. Oh, yeah. Because at that point, he looks like he's the last person who saw Naomi alive. Last person to see her alive and is a crazy stalker and is thousands of miles away from where he normally is. Yes, yes. Yeah. So going back to the 15th of December when the police goes into her room, or her room mm. at about 5.31pm, they find the room perfectly clean and ordered, which her friends say is not normal <laughs> right, because okay. she was very messy. So she's an archetypal student then? I guess so, archetypal archety archety archetypal young person or something but yes yeah no she, she was known for being extremely messy right and her room was clean and everything was in its place so her friend as soon as the police says that say no that's not normal yeah. <laughs> something happened there it looking normal isn't normal yeah the police found her one coat she's only got one coat yes and okay. they find it which is weird because in business it's kind of fresh in the winter yeah. in the mountains mm. So you wouldn't go out without a coat. No. They find her laptop and her wallet with 565 euros. Quite a lot of cash for a student. Mm. The only missing, missing thing in her room is a blanket, a suitcase, her passport and her phone. I, I'm, I'm giving the, the... Going on the assumption that she's very typical of most Japanese people. She's, you know, quite small and, and slight. And could easily fit in a suitcase. Yeah, presumably, yes. Yeah. Yes. This is all becoming horribly depressing. They find some prints on a teacup that match Contreras' prints. But at that point, they know he's there anyway. Well, so yeah, no but if he'd cleaned the, the room, you think he would have kind of like Removed done it with gloves on. I could have missed them on the cup. It's easy to, to miss. Um, they also find DNA on a sink, a bottle of water, a t-shirt, on the walls, and on the floor in the bathroom. Mm. I don't know from the document I read, which is a court document in Spanish, um, a lot of the information for that story comes from the documents that the French justice system sent to the Chilean justice system to arrest Contreras. Oh, right, okay. And well, I'm going on the assumption that because there was such a lag between the the, the what was it the fourth of December and then yes. what was it the fifteenth they 15th, broke yeah. in, yeah. So I mean, yeah, he had plenty of time to get back to. Oh yeah, plenty of time to do lots of things. Yes, right. yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but the document isn't clear on whose DNA it is. Right. Uh, the only thing they say is that it was male. Okay. So we don't know if it's Contreras, we don't know if it's somebody else, mm. we just know it's some male DNA. Right. And that will become a problem later. Okay. On the 23rd of December, the chief of police says during a press conference that they have a criminal affair on their hands mm. and that the suspect, they suspect that Narumi is dead, but they don't yeah. have a body. They don't have any reason really to prove it, but, no, but they think that she's dead. She's missing yes. and you've got... A very multi, uh, as a global affair, haven't you? You've got some. Oh, it's international, from, I guess. Yes, at that point, uh, somebody yeah. from Japan in France. Yes, and, uh, the suspect, Chile. Yes. A lead comes in on the twentieth of December when a bar owner in Verdun, so we're talking northeast of France near the Belgian border, mm -hmm. reports to the police that they saw Narumi on the nineteenth of December in the bar. She stayed there for about two hours and was crying a lot. And an employee of the bar also confirms that it was Narumi. So, so it's that's a, it's two, a, two It's witnesses. a customer and an employee who say, yep, yeah, that was her, she was in the bar. Okay, so she might not have left that room in a suitcase then. At that point, they don't know. Um, they also find, the police also find other witnesses around the restaurant saying that, yeah, no, that woman was there on that day. But looking into it, they discover that indeed there was an Asian woman in the bar and on, in the restaurant on that day. She took lots of pills and she was crying all the time, so much so that other customers alerted the police right. who came and took her to the hospital. So there's a trace of who that woman was. Oh, right, okay. And it turns out that it was a woman who was 30 years old, older than Narumi, who was only in her 20s, yeah. and it wasn't Narumi. 
that's the thing, that's isn't it? End. Your facial recognition for people who are outside your ethnicity ethnicity is it, it drastically goes down. Yes. Not that we think all Japanese people look the same, but it's understandable. Yeah, so age stood it in this, this which wasn't her. Mm. As Contreras is the police's best lead, they start rebuilding his time in Besançon and around Besançon. Mm. They use the GPS of the rental car he used, his mobile phone and his credit cards from Chile. So they learn that he arrived in Europe on the 29th of November. Mm-hmm. So we're talking a week and a bit before. Yeah, yeah, it must be. Yeah. In Geneva. Right. Then he went to Madrid but, by, um, by plane. D- d- b- b- that's a completely different direction. Yes. And then from Madrid to Dijon by bus. Oh, my God. That's a really weird trip. I can't explain that trip. It makes no sense. Oh, that is crazy. Yeah, Madrid is totally out of the way. It makes no sense. Yeah. Geneva to Dijon, uh, that's a stretch. But for Besançon, it's not even the closest. Besançon is closer to Geneva than Dijon. Mm. Via Madrid, uh, makes no sense. Oh, my God. And Madrid, no uh, Madrid to Dijon by bus. Good uh, Lord. That's a good number of hours, yeah. Wow. that's so. a, And it's a lumpy journey as well. Yeah, so... At that point, nobody knows what he was doing there. What, why mm. he went to Madrid, no clue. And he was trying to put people off the scent of... It didn't take long for the police to find out, so no. it didn't work if that was the plan. <laughs> I don't know. So in Dijon, he rented a car mm. that he had booked on the 17th of November, so 10 days earlier. Right. I mean, well, this, is 20 all, days earlier. this is all premeditation, Nearly. isn't it? I mean, he's... No, 10 days, yeah. Yeah, so clearly he had planned that trip, mm. yeah, yeah. On the 1st of December, he goes to a local Carrefour supermarket mm-hmm. to buy some paraffin for a heater, a box of matches, and a spray of chlorine-based detergent. Uh-oh. According to court documents, after that he traveled on the back roads through Jura, so that's the mountains at the mm. Swiss border. Yeah. On the 2nd and 3rd of December, he has a hotel, a hotel room in Ornon which is about 25 kilometers south of Besançon. The GPS of his car shows that he traveled to Besançon every day between the 1st and the 4th. Right. And during those days, students report having seen him around the halls and sometimes hiding in the kitchen behind doors and stuff. (laughs) It freaked out a few students, apparently. So if he wanted to do everything surreptitiously, he wasn't doing a very good job. Well, nobody reported him, but he was spotted, yeah. It is then at that point that he met with Naomi and had dinner, as we know. Oh, I just happened to be in the area. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just not far from Chile. Contreras' car was parked around the university until the 6th of December. And at that point, at 4.23 a.m., it went back to the Jura forests, like a few days earlier, Mm. until 7.44 a.m. Right. Contreras returned his rental car on the 7th of December in the middle of the day. Mm. And according to the employees of the rental company, it was covered in mud inside and outside. Right. Including the boot. And the car had traveled 776 kilometers in eight days. Right. That's quite a lot. Uh, It's nearly 100 kilometers a day. It's not a huge amount. It's easy to do. but I guess so. uh, It's a good amount, yes. After that, he bought a bus ticket for Geneva where he caught a plane to Barcelona. He spent several days in Barcelona until the 12th of December with his cousin, Juan Felipe Ramirez. Right. Well, that kind of makes sense. Yeah, so the Catalan police goes and arrests and interrogates Ramirez. Ah, okay. right, okay, so he didn't make it back to Chile. No, that's his cousin, Ah, right, Ramirez, oh, okay, I see. Who lives in Barcelona. Yes. So his cousin reported that he had troubling discussions with Contreras. He never told his cousin why he came to to Europe, and he Mm. certainly never mentioned Narumi. Mm. He pretended that he came for a conference in Geneva. He had to replace somebody who had to give a talk and couldn't for some reason. Right. So that's his explanation Uh for being there. And one of the strange things Contreras asked Ramirez, who was a medicine student, is about dying of asphyxia, hanging, how you die of hanging, and how you would know somebody's dead. <laughs> Unless you're making a podcast. 
<laughs> you know, unless you're having a conversation with us, then that's the wrong kind of conversation to be having with somebody and yeah. you immediately report them to the police. Yeah, there were very specific questions and he was a bit worried about what that, yeah. what that was about. That's crazy. Although he never said he came to see Narumi, he was talking about her in the past tense as well, you mm. noticed. On the 12th of December, a week after Narumi's disappearance, he goes back to Geneva to catch a plane to Chile via Madrid again. That's crazy traveling. Yeah. Then he arrives in Santiago on the 13th. I mean, even just getting from Barcelona to Madrid is, you know... Yeah, but that's not what he did. He did. He he went from Barcelona to Geneva, yeah. back to Madrid, yeah, then to Chile. I know, I know, I know. It's totally crazy, that traveling. On Narumi's laptop, the police finds 981 messages exchanged between Narumi and Contreras between the 28th of August and the 8th of October. Mm. 646 of which, that's two-thirds of, of the messages, were exchanged on the 5th of September which is totally insane. Mm. That, uh, that must be like Should, a message a minute for 24 hours. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy. neither of them must have been doing anything that day unless they were predominantly sent by one person. Yes. In those messages, the police see that Naomi and Contreras' relationship doesn't go well. Contreras is jealous. We know he is. Mm. And he demands that Narumi deletes contact information for a few people on Facebook, including Arthur Del Piccolo. But, I mean, he he's the ex, right? Yes. So, I think I'd be telling him to, yeah, what's what's the expression I'm looking for? Fuck off. I'll yeah. talk to who, well, whoever I want. That's probably the contents of the discussions. I haven't seen them, but that's probably <laughs> what they're saying. Um, that doesn't take that many messages. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. She also threatens to call the police mm. at some point. She should have done. Yes. Or her. yes. One thing that troubled the detectives is a video that Contreras posted online where he says that Narumi needs to pay for what she's done and that she can't continue behaving the way she did with him. He gives her an ultimatum in which Narumi needs to sort things out and make a distinction between what she can do in France and what she can do forever. I.e. what you're doing now you can't ever do again. And if not, she'll put into motion some actions, and he doesn't say what. This guy's nuts. This guy's yeah, I swear to put that on, uh, on the internet. Yeah, uh, I mean, this, this is just such, um, you know, crazy stalker, ex, ex-partner, because oh, let's face it, I mean, it's both men and women that do this, and the, which leads to the inevitable, if I can't have you, then no one can have you. Yes. Scenario, which it happens so often. Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, the video was posted, I think, on Vimeo originally, but you can find it on YouTube now. It's not the kind of thing I would go to, but... Uh, yeah. So the police feels like it's threatening enough to kind of confirm that he's involved in what happened to Narumi. Yeah, definitely. It's not proof, but they're thinking, yeah, uh-huh, it's him. On the 8th of October, uh, there's another intense batch of messages exchanged between Narumi and Contreras. Mm-hmm. Narumi accuses him of having made her pregnant and not assuming his responsibilities. There's no proof that she was. She never mentioned it to anyone else. So we don't know if she actually was. It's a bit of a crazy thing to say to yes. somebody that unstable. <sighs> yeah. And he accuses her of bad behavior, having left him to go to France. <laughs> because they met in Japan. Ah, right, okay. She was a student in Japan, and he was there for work, I think, uh, for a little while, and that's how they met. So he feels like she went to France to... To, to avoid him and him. get rid of him. Mm. The last few connections to Naomi's Facebook account are done from the Jura forests and the very last one from Chile. So, from uh-huh. Chile. Okay. Yeah. In Japan, police contacts two friends of Contreras who tell them that Contreras had contacted them at the time Mar- Narumi disappeared to ask them to translate a few colloquial expressions into Japanese. Yeah. But to make strangely, him sound like he's Japanese. It, it kind of. But strangely to them, the expressions were in the feminine form, which made no sense, obviously, because Contreras he's wasn't a, a woman. Yeah. So they did, they did give him the expressions, but obviously the way he put them together didn't really work. And that's why the, the family, Naruto's yeah, family, thought, thought, thought it that, was weird. that doesn't work. That's yeah. not the way you'd say it. Yeah. You just know, I mean, people's idiosyncratic language... I mean, how, how you speak to your parents, is, you know, would never be the same as how I would speak to them. Yes. 
even if it was in the same language. Yes. On the 31st of December 2017, so a, a bit over a year, a year and a half later, close mm. to a year and a half later, Contreras' cousin contacts the Catalan police again, Ramirez, right. to report that he received a message from Contreras saying that in difficult times, family should help family. And he says that he took it as a threat to not cooperate with the police. So he went straight to the cops and said, yeah, I received that. Uh, I Look don't want down. to have anything to do with this. Yes. <laughs> I mean, the, the, the whole problem is when you're trying to arrest a suspect, it's difficult enough. But when you're trying to do it, you know, Across in two different planet. languages, on mm. two different, you know, hemispheres of, 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 of the planet, I mean, yes. it must just slow the thing down so yes. much. Yes, also the cops can't do anything because Chile is a different country. Mm. So even if they had proof, that would be it. Mm. And there's nothing they can do. Especially since Chile doesn't have extradition. Um, with France. With anybody. Same as Argentina. They don't right, have yes. extradition treaties with mm. anyone. Lots of Nazis. At the same time, Contreras contacts the police in Chile to make a statement. Mm -hmm. In that, he describes how he last met... Narumi on the 4th of December in the afternoon as he was going home. She was crying. Then they went to a restaurant. You know that? Yeah. After that, they went back to her room and she eventually asked him to leave. He ended his statement saying that his phone slipped and that to find it again, he ended up leaving through a fire door instead of the main door and then woke into town hoping that Narumi would contact him, which didn't happen. And that, that was the last time he saw Narumi. That just sounds like a giant steaming pile of lies. Yes, uh, that, that's a flimsy explanation for having not used the main door to leave yeah, the building. Yes. I, I, I left uh, the, the, the fire door just to not look surreptitiously at all, you know. Yes. In January 2017, the police searches Narumi's body in the for mm. forests. Mm-hmm near the places where the GPS from the car says Stopped, that Contreras yeah. has been. They search again in April. There's 80 gendarmes involved at the time. They even include dogs and divers, yeah. because there's lakes everywhere. They search again in December 2017 uh, in newly identified areas, but ultimately they can't find her body. Oh, that's so sad for the family. On the 25th of January 2017, the French justice minister contacts the Chilean police to ask to have Contreras arrested and extradited to France. Mm -hmm. Of course, the Chilean police refuses. It says that the information provided doesn't justify Contreras' arrest, but issues an order for Contreras not to leave the country for two months. <laughs> oh yeah, that'll, uh, that'll show him. Yes, and part of the reason is the DNA uh, is too vaguely described um, as I said earlier, it's described yeah, as some you male just said DNA, it was male. but they yeah. don't know who it is because, yeah, yeah. of course, they don't have his DNA, so they can't say it's his. That's annoying they that can't the, prove it. the cousin in Barcelona isn't a closer uh, yeah, It's relative. probably too far, yeah. Yes, they might say they're related, but... Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So they, they use that as a reason not to agree mm. to the extradition. You can normally tell people's ethnicity from, from DNA. I'm surprised European they ethnicity is pretty mixed. Uh, yeah. I think it would be hard to distinguish two countries in Europe, really. No, but I mean, he would be, uh, it would be South American. Yeah, but South Americans are not indigenous, they're from Europe. Oh, okay, right, yes. It's like North Americans, there's Stupid no such thing as an American, yes. well, apart from if you look at for the Native Americans. But yes. apart from that, a white American doesn't exist, it's a European. Yeah. So We pollute everywhere. On the 14th of February, Contreras testifies in court in Chile. Mm -hmm. He says that he's innocent. Of course, they all do. Of course he does. But he changes his story slightly. He says that when they went back to Narumi's room, they had sex, and that was what the other students heard. And he says that the, she then felt guilty and admitted that she was involved with Arthur, and she panicked about being unfaithful. Uh -huh. And that's why she asked him to leave. Right. So he changed his story slightly at that point. So uh, he's trying to pass it off as rough sex. Yes, because they must have mentioned the noise, which he might not have been aware of before, yeah. I'm guessing. So suddenly he has to find an explanation for something new. Mm. I mean, this is turning into a really difficult case. I mean, you've got so many different 
I, I mean, just basically France is just a geographical location that it happened. But you've, yes. you know, you've got people from different countries. You've got nobody. I mean, yes. I'm surprised. I, I don't know if we're going to have a nice ending, but, you know, it's it's crazy at the moment. Yes. Several times during 2017, French ministers meet with Japanese ministers and discuss the case. Mm -hmm. The Japanese foreign affair minister also meets with the Chilean justice minister. Even the French president is thought to have mentioned the case to the Chilean president when he visited the country that year. Oh, right. Okay. Very high profile. Pretty high profile, yes. Early 2019, the French justice ministry translates all the documents they have into Spanish and send them to Chile via the diplomatic channel. Right. So they obviously learned from their previous experience that the courts are going to do everything they can to say no. So yeah. now they're they are translating the everything. whole thing. Just and giving sending them as much there. information yes. as, as they could possibly yes. ask for. So they can't say you don't have enough information, yeah. or they mm -hmm. hope. Finally, Contreras is arrested, and the French prosecutor, uh, the instructing judge, and two detectives fly to Chile to interrogate him. Mm-hmm. The interrogation takes place on the 18th of April and is led by the Chilean prosecutor because, of course, he's, he's the one who has a jurisdiction. The French yeah. cops don't have anything. Yes. I guess they're just there for, yes. as observers. But at that point, Contreras refuses to talk and answer, and answer questions. Of course he does. And it takes a long time, but on the 18th of May 2020, so we're three years later, mm. the Chilean Supreme Court allows extradition of Contreras to France. And he's taken from the court, put uh, put on a, in a car to the airport on a plane, and to fr uh, and sent to France straight away. Right. No so delay. He's, he's kind of like got the marshal. He's probably hanged. Yes, no, they obviously no, didn't no. want to give him any chance to no. to delay things again. So no, he's no, just no. put on the plane and yeah. go away. On the second of February, February twenty twenty one, the prosecutor in France decides that there's enough in the case to go to court. Mm -hmm. The trial starts on the twenty second of March twenty twenty two in Besançon. To make sure things are done properly, there's a team of six translators, three for Japanese, three for Spanish, who translate in both directions all the discussions. Good Lord. So they don't want anybody to say, oh, I couldn't understand what was going on. So there's translators all over the place. Oh, my God. There's two rooms allocated to the public and journalists on top of the room where the trial actually takes place. Right. So there are three rooms. And there's large, large screens everywhere because everybody wants to see. Of course. And there's several, several famous lawyers involved in, on both cases, on right. both sides. Okay. It just sounds like a logistical nightmare. <laughs> it was probably one of the complicated cases in Besançon, yes, because Besançon is in the middle of nowhere. They're probably not used to that. On the 12th of April 2022, Contreras is found guilty mm -hmm. and sentenced to 28 years in prison. Of course he appeals. Of course he does. Because he's innocent. The appeal trial takes place between the 21st of February and the 10th of March 2023. Right. So we're talking last just year. a year later. Yeah. Uh, last year, yeah. During 2022, Contreras fires his lawyer. Or lawyers. It's okay. always a good sign when you fire your yeah. lawyers. A new lawyer is appointed. But just as the trial starts, he notifies the court that he's been fired as well. <laughs> and therefore won't represent his client. Two new lawyers are appointed, mm. which delays the start of the trial by 28, 48 hours. It's starting to feel like Contreras is trying to delay things for some yeah. reason. I don't know where he wants to go with that, because at some point he will run out of options. But it, Well, that's he's going to start like. running out of lawyers at this point. I suspect at some point the course will say, no, you can't fire your lawyer, your lawyer again. Yeah. But we're not there yet. Um, I, I really don't, don't see what he's trying to accomplish with that. After 48 hours, the two lawyers ask for another delay because 48 hours is not enough to start working on the case, obviously. Oh, a case like that is so complicated. Yes. Yeah, I mean, that's crazy. Yeah. So the court accepts and delays the trial until the 4th of December. So we're talking... Oh, four months ago. A few months. Contrast fires his two lawyers again, two weeks before the trial. And a new one is appointed. And the trial finally starts. After three weeks and five hours of deliberation, he's found guilty again and sentenced again to 28 years of prison. Wow. So for all that... Uh... Exactly the same thing. Yes, it was all a waste of time. 
And that's it. He's in prison now. So just starting his sentence? Yeah, because that would have been in the early 2024. He would have started his sentence. Such a sad story that we... Poor, poor young woman's body. Never know. Man. He well, might say one day, but at the moment, yeah, we don't know where it could be. But given the mud, it's probably in the woods somewhere, and there's so much woods in the in the Jura. It's just essentially a big mountain covered in yeah. covered in trees. So it's a beautiful area, but you know. they, they have no chance of finding it. You well, will have to tell them, or she'll never be find found. I does. I, I think this case is definitely a example of you might want to really try and complicate Leah. A bread cre- a, a breadcrumb trail is very complicated, but you. You run, but you can never. 